I am all about free resources, free training, free education, free everything that we can. And that's why in this video, I wanna show you Velociraptor. Velociraptor is a free and fantastic EDR or endpoint detection and response utility that can help us as defenders better understand the inner workings of the computer, the endpoint, what we're working on for analysis and investigation. We'll be walking through another free exercise and activity and lab from the pay what you can training that Black Hills Information Security, Anti-Siphon Training, all that tribe of companies, all of course, John Strand putting together for more education and learning. Just a gentle reminder, a lot of John Strand's courses are pay what you can, and that is literally you choose your price tag. You can pay the minimum, pay 50, pay 95, but if you want tuition assistance, you can go ahead and click here and that will bring that price down to zero. You can literally get training for free. They do have their active defense and cyber deception course coming up, which is awesome. You go through so much cool stuff that will fool the adversary, the threat actor, the hacker breaking into your environment, and you get to do some really, really cool stuff, and it's always super beginner friendly and accessible. Anyway, sorry for the spiel. Let's get to this lab activity and exercises. This is freely available on GitHub for John Strand or StrandJS's intro labs repo, and we can scroll down to go take a look at the Velociraptor markdown file. And they do offer a little bit of background. Hey, if you're interested, you can go take a look at Velocity website and their training. And this is it. This is Velociraptor. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's super clean and super sweet. They show you what you can do with it. You're collecting artifacts or monitoring for incidents. You're hunting for anything that could help you in your investigation and threat hunting. And they do have tons of free training videos. If you want to get into, hey, how are you actually using Velociraptor? How are you going to kick the tires? Learn VQL, do some forensic analysis, offline collection, etc., etc. Their website is pretty cool. Actually, they have this artifact exchange where they can showcase a whole lot of different community contributed artifacts. I actually thought this was kind of sweet. Hey, one, that was just came in the other day, Windows Forensics Clipboard. Uh, this one is actually based off of my video, which I thought was super duper sweet. If you haven't checked that out, I thought it was hysterical. Look, there's my name in a little Velociraptor VQL thing. Uh, that, that, that's just cool. Huge thanks to Hisham Adwan for putting this together. Thank you so much. Anyway, sorry, a whole lot of rambling. Hey, let's get to it. I am inside of the virtual machine for the pay what you can course. Let's go ahead and open up our file explorer and let's navigate to the C colon, I think it's intro labs directory here. Perfect. Let's move into the couple of files here, Velociraptor 0551 Windows AMD 64. This is a seven zip file. There is also the installer. I think that's an MSI. Yeah, that's an MSI, but we'll wanna go ahead and right click on the blank looking one because it is a seven zip file. We're not viewing the file extensions right now. If I go ahead and make sure that the file extensions are viewable, this is a seven zip. Let's right click use seven zip to extract here. Now that that is extracted, we do have the executable. Uh, I do note, I think actually this is an older version of Velociraptor. Velociraptor, if we could take a look at their uh, GitHub repository there on 0.6.8. So we're a little bit old, but hey, for the point of the lab, I think that's A-OK. -okay. Now let's open up an administrator command prompt. So I'm gonna type in terminal in my search bar and hit control shift enter to open this at the administrator. And I'm gonna navigate into the C colon intro labs directory one more time. Note that we do have our Velociraptor executable file here. So I can go ahead and run this with the syntax that the lab already gives us. If you wanna go take a look back at the instructions here, after you've drilled this down, hey, gone ahead and created all this, we will use our Velociraptor to generate configuration files. So We'll copy that syntax, hop back over here and try and run this. I am in PowerShell at the moment. So if I actually opened up CMD, that would have been nice and easy for me. But note, I do need to run that again with a dot slash in front of it to denote in the current directory, this Velociraptor file. Let's hit enter on this and we'll work through the config. And this will ask me, hey, what operating system is the server going to be deployed on? Right now we can use the arrow keys to move around. Uh, I am gonna be on Windows, right? So I'll hit enter here. Path to the data store directory. We can hit enter one more time automatically self sign cert or whatever SSL certificate we want. Again, we'll hit enter, just cruise through all the defaults. If you want a public DNS name for the front end, we're just gonna use localhost because we're gonna set this up in a super simple way, standalone where the client and the server are both the same machine. Just a little bit of, hey, movie magic so that we can have this lab nice and easily contained for us. So I'll enter yet again, front end port to listen on 8,000 default, enter yet again, and then 8889 for the GUI to listen on. We're okay with all the defaults, let's just hit enter. Am I using Google Domain's DIN DNS? Let's enter no, capital N, it, and then enter on that. GUI username or email address to authorize empty to end? No, that's just fine. Now I am zoomed in a whole lot here, but you can see the Velociraptor is kicking off. We can go ahead and generate keys, and I believe this is going to take a couple moments here, but I'll need to enter just in case. Yeah, okay, it's asking where should we go ahead and write some of these, because I think did wanna know where should we log. 
Now, where do I want to write the server config file? Defaults are A-OK. -okay. Enter, 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 and we are finally back at our prompt. Velociraptor is ready for us. Now, moving back over to the lab exercise, we do want to create a user that we can use to log in to the GUI, the graphical user interface. So we'll use the exact same command, run Velociraptor, pass in the config for the server that was just generated in the current directory, right? If we ls, you can see that we should have a client config.yaml file and a server config.yaml file. So we have everything that we need. Now we just need to go ahead and add our user. So let me copy and paste this. Once again, I'll add a dot slash and paste this in. I hit control shift V on my keyboard so I can paste that easy and it will add this administrator role and we'll need to choose a password. This will be for us to use. So don't forget it, but it's in a live little learning sandbox environment. You can make it super stupid. You can make it anything. I will make it literally anything. Next up, after we've done all this, let's go ahead and run the MSI file. To load proper files in the proper directory, we can of course dot slash this to run it and then start the server with our server config. Dot slash MSI, fired it up. Okay, nice and easy, that was uh, super quick. Now we can go ahead and start the server, a little quick copy and paste again. See this thing in action and it's cruising. That notes there will be a little bit of red. Hey, a couple of little bloody errors here, but that is a-okay. It is still running and doing its thing. We can see the front end is ready to handle clients at localhost 8000. But more importantly for us, the GUI or the graphical user interface is ready to handle requests on localhost 8889. So we can go navigate to that and note that this will give us a little SSL, hey, self-signed certificate. That's a-okay. We can hit advance and then proceed to the website. Now this will ask for the username and password that we just ended up entering, right? So the username here is root and then the password that you just chose, literally anything we can sign in. And here is Velociraptor, nice and easy. Now we have a couple different tasks we can do at the welcome page. These are listed out here as options for us. We can inspect the server state. Let me go ahead and click on this. And currently connected clients is nothing right now because we haven't connected any clients. So let's go ahead and do that. That will be the next step. The lab suggests that we open up another Windows command prompt, which we can do simply in the drop-down bar of Windows Terminal, move into the intro labs, and then try to fire off the MSI, and then generate a new client with our client config. So let me go ahead and create a new command prompt window. And now that I'm using that, I don't actually have to use the dot slash every time that I wanna run something. Let's fire off the MSI file, and that's A-OK. -okay. Now let's copy and paste the client syntax. I'll paste that in. And there we go. Okay, compiling all artifacts, it's doing its thing, and the client is running. It is going to end up doing whatever it needs to do with a whole lot of output kind of running in the foreground, but it is still connected and good. Now, if we move back to Velociraptor inside of the GUI, we can go ahead and click on this homepage one more time, or just Control Shift R to see, do we have any currently connected clients? Sometimes the view gets confusing here, so if you want to toggle into a different page, like going to the hunt, you could click on that and then move back to the homepage, and you will see your currently connected clients. You've gone up with a little bit of a spike. We do have one connected here. Now, cruising back over to the lab, let's take a look at what we can do with this setup and Velociraptor running on one client here. First things first, this is not necessarily a detection platform. It's designed to allow you to dig when you get an alert on malware signatures or from suspicious traffic. So keep in mind, look, it's not a replacement for antivirus. It's not a preventative measure. It's something that can help you with a lot of that incident response, digital forensics, threat hunting, and analysis. Now, if we move up to the top of our Velociraptor page here, we could search for clients or show all of them and take a look. There is our Microsoft Windows 10 Enterprise. There is our operating system for our client connected with its own client ID. We can click into this, get a little bit more details. Hey, here's the agent name. Here's the operating system, host name, and details. Now, here's the kicker. We only have this deployed out to one client right now, our single agent running on our local system. But of course, you could deploy this out to as many clients or as many agents as you want across all of your endpoints, across your entire infrastructure, your entire ecosystem, anything, and you could do this for mass rapid response, instant response, but let's zoom in on only our current host right now. If I go ahead and click on the shell option in the top right, we could genuinely like run commands. We could interrogate or push this down to all of the agents if we wanted to. So let's use PowerShell and let's try to run the command netstat tack anob. We could go ahead and launch this, click on that button here, and we might not see the result 
results right away. Hey, it's going to take, I don't know, whatever time to task it, do its thing, blah, blah, blah. Note that, yeah, if you have some spooky, weird gut feelings that, oh, isn't this like a command and control framework? Look, man, every single RMM or remote monitoring and management tool is. Every single EDR is a C2. <laughs> so what we can do is go ahead and click on the I feature here, and that will show us the results as they've come through. Take a look. This is all of the same output you would get from just simply running netstat tack a knob on the host. Like if I open this up with the command prompt, it's doing, of course, that. Following back along in the free labs provided with the pay what you can training, anti siphon and all the great stuff from John Strain, let's do a hunt. You can click on the hunt icon, start a hunt with the plus sign, and then enter whatever information you'd like to name it and select different artifacts. We're going to keep it simple. Hey, we can just go ahead and grab the generic system PS tree. But note, this is a lot like that artifact exchange where you saw, hey, the details of calling out the activities cache DB in the clipboard one that I showed is just an example of the very, very start. So let's go do that. Let me move over to the hunt section. Let's create a new hunt with a plus sign. We can call it a uh, process hunt and we can go ahead and select artifacts that we'd like. Let's look for our PS tree. I'm just going to search for that and click on the generic PS tree. This will display the call chain for every process in the system by traversing the process's parent IDs and digging through it. You can see the VQL syntax as to how it's actually building and cooking this up, and we could fire it off. We can go ahead and hit review, see some more of the details as to how this is all coming together, look a little JSON structure of it, and then once we hit launch, it'll get started. Now again, we're only doing this on one host. You could do this across as many as you want, and you could run multiple hunts. You could just keep collecting artifacts and get information for your investigation. Oh, but actually, I'm wrong. Okay, once we hit launch, we need to go ahead and actually run it. Uh, it'll add it to the queue, but we do need to actually run the hunt. We can press the play button after we've selected the hunt, and then we'll go ahead and do its thing. So let me go ahead and click on this one. Let's click the go button, and then yeah, run this hunt. Let's do it. Now you can see super duper quick, there was one scheduled, we had finished across that one client, and we can go ahead and download the results. You could get a full download, and my face might be in the way, you can get a summary download, CSV only, or anything that we'd like. Let's go ahead and click on CSV only, and that will start a download here for me. Okay, looks like we have the zip file, this is all bundled up. Let me click on that, it opens up and gets started here. I can zoom in on this and take a look. This is our zip file where we have our generic system PS3 CSV, and some more of the hunt details. We might need to go ahead and open this within WordPad. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have Excel loaded up in here, so we wouldn't be able to see this. But this is very, very similar to the JSON that you saw just a moment ago, or that JavaScript object notation, to get some more information on how the Velociraptor hunt was put together. And then, of course, you get the results of the hunt across whatever you might like for any of your clients, for any of the running agents. And of course, yeah, this is not ideal inside of WordPad. But getting this in Excel or getting this in another programmatic interface, like being a C CSV on its own can still help you potentially map a whole lot of this information. And this tells us, look, these are running processes. This is what it's doing, where, when, and how. And that is pretty worthwhile information. Cruising back into the lab, this does wrap it up. This does go ahead and say, really, that's all that you wanted to accomplish for this small, simple showcase demonstration of Velociraptor. You could actually go ahead and build out an HTML report if that's what you wanted to see. Um, but it really, it drives the point home here. Look, we have only scratched the surface of all the cool, amazing things that you can do with Velociraptor. It is one awesome utility for going on the hunt, actually hunting, threat hunting, looking for artifacts, trying to get forensic details that you might not otherwise have. I I think Velociraptor can do like wild and crazy cool stuff to like pull memory and carve out things that you might not normally be able to do. Uh, so it's worth digging into and maybe we can get a whole lot more videos on Velociraptor. Man, it's so, so cool. And this was only the tip of the iceberg. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're having fun with a couple of these. I hope it's nice to know, look, there are tons and tons of free Reese's out there for you to learn, for you to play with, for you to use and add to your toolkits and uh, the Black Hills information security, the anti-siphon training, all of John Strand's pay what you can courses. That's another one to add in your arsenal here. Link in the description for all that stuff if you're interested. And thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.